Right, I'm going to begin uh, by asking sort of how you came to be involved in, in this project and what it was about this role and this this character that really um, appealed to you. Um, well, first, I, I heard about this project, gosh, probably a year and a half before I had the audition. I was doing um, a sort of social activism photo shoot with Hamza, who plays Hassan, and he said he just came across a script and I would be perfect. I would play his wife and possibly his daughter as well. And I was like, okay, okay. Um, and as I always do, I said, I want to audition for it. I'm not going to just accept it. Um, and we'll see when it's ready, if uh, it's the right fit. And then two years later, I saw the script audition and my agent asked if I would be interested on interested in it, and uh, we can ask for a direct offer or whatnot. And I said, no, I'm never doing that. I'm auditioning for everything. And then I also said, I remember this. I think this is the project that Hamza had told me about. So that was the inception. And I read the script. And as I was preparing for the audition, I was in Italy with my best friend and we were reading the sides. And she said, we were reading the sides of me talking to my mother about how I wanted to be an actress. And she said, if you don't get this part, I'm going to be angry at you. <laughs> and uh, I guess I never got gave her an opportunity to be angry because it worked out. Yeah, if you didn't get the part, it would have been a double whammy. You would have upset your friend at the same time. But I know, we don't want that. No. I, that's no. that's very important, no. keeping my friends happy. No. <laughs> um, you mentioned, obviously, that, well, about that sort of bit of dialogue about sort of telling the mother she was about wanting to be an actress. I mean, Asra wants to be, she's a sort of a free spirit, free spirit, and, but, and obviously her parents and her mother in this is quite conservative, has quite traditionalist kind of uh, sort of views, which maybe don't necessarily understand her child's kind of career and sort of lifestyle path. I was wondering uh, if as someone who's got into the arts themselves, whether that's relatable at all, because it's such a, a precarious industry. And I mean, in, in for some, for, for, for the older generation, sometimes maybe they see it as an unstable uh, kind of profession. Oh I just God, if yes. You any, if you had any parents or teachers that, we're maybe a bit apprehensive about pushing you down towards this path. So if you could relate to that side of things. Yes, I relate tremendously to that. <laughs> I mean, um, my, I wasn't allowed to take drama in high school. I took it in grade nine. And then my parents said, my dad in particular, that it wasn't a serious subject. And then I convinced him in grade 12 that I could get 90s in it and it'll help me get into Schulich School of Business or Neuroscience at Toronto University. Um, and yeah, they were quite, I think, I think in fairness to immigrant parents, you know, they come to North America or the West in, in the desire of their children having stable jobs. And acting is completely unstable. So it's scary for them. Now, in India, however, it's interesting because India is the biggest film industry in the world. Mm -hmm. But it's something particularly about immigrants coming to North America, they want their children to be safe. So it's been very difficult. But when my parents saw that I was serious, they mm -hmm. doubt subsided. But what I liked about this film is it doesn't sort of vilify anyone. It kind of shows, obviously, there are generational divides, but and that it can be quite hard for both sides to understand the other. Um, do you think that was something that was quite um, important in this film, to kind of show where both sides are kind of coming from without sort of painting anyone out to be kind of a villain in that regard? Yeah, I think that's important for humanity. We live in such a culture that is so blame-based. That's the root of cancel culture it's like everyone else is bad and I don't look at my own culpabilities and seeing different perspectives and seeing the intergenerational stories in ways makes everyone culpable yeah. uh, and that's really what intergenerational trauma is it's that everyone is culpable and do I continue to make the same mistakes that my parents made or do I 
carry on their traumas or do I choose to live differently? Um, I, I'm thinking, looking on this project, we're so talking of your, your, your on-screen parents. I thought Nimra was wonderful and this is such a layered, such a moving performance. Can you just talk about working alongside her as, a, as your mother on this production? Well, Nimra is a very, she's a very boisterous personality. So <laughs> the first day walking into set, I just hear her, ha ha ha. And I'm like, I think I know who that is. <laughs> so she's everybody's friend on set and she's very loving. And she's one of those people who cares about what's going on in the other person. So that's very nice to be around. I was, and I got to practice Urdu and speak with so many actors in my sister tongue. My mother tongue is Punjabi. And that was healing for me. Made me feel connected to my ancestry, to myself. It's interesting you said it because I actually, I spoke to uh, Dev Patel a few years ago and he was saying through cinema and through stories that he's telling on the screen, he's had the opportunity to really learn more about his kind of family heritage, having shot in India a few times and played roles that require kind of research into Indian history. Is that a nice kind of byproduct of your career that you're inadvertently learning and absorbing more about your own history in some ways? Oh my God, Yes. The best part of filming was the filming. I God, I'm like, what am I about to say? <laughs> the best part of the filming was the filming. But the second best part was, as a result, I got to go on a Sikh pilgrimage. Um, Sikhism is the language, the religion I was raised in, and I practice. And um, are the birthplace of the person Guru Nanak Dev Ji, who invented the religion and death place is in Pakistan. And had this film not be, been shot in Pakistan, I would have not been able to see those places, been able to sleep at the temple and wake up to the hymns. Um, my grandparents are from Sargoda and Sialkot. I got to learn so much about that, drive close by. Um, so, so many gifts of connecting to my culture this this movie gave um sure and surely with all that in mind your parents must be really pleased now you got into acting <laughs> <laughs> yes yes that that part you know that part i think it's also revolutionary being an indian playing a pakistani role um and because we were all one at a time and I don't know that my parents would have been brave enough to ever make that trip to Pakistan for their pilgrimage because there's so much unrest between India and Pakistan. And I think my going there and leading and loving out to Pakistan has encouraged them to do that pilgrimage themselves and go back to the places where their mothers and fathers were born and raised. There's something quite um, quite light, I think, to this film. But there's also quite a lot of pathos. It's very, although it's quite funny at times, it's really moving at the same time. Was it was this um, role tonally quite challenging to get to get right? Yes, it was very challenging. I um, before I work with a coach, and I've said this before with all humility. I I think I did good work on the film, but I think I could have gone even deeper. I was scared about a lot of the concepts. I was scared to face my sexuality, which was the hardest thing for me. I was scared to look at the reality of the mother-daughter relationship. It was easiest for me actually to reveal the pain of losing a father. I, In my head, I thought that would be the hardest thing. Um, it was difficult. And five weeks before the movie, I was in a blackout. I was so scared because there was so much self-work I hadn't done that this film was calling me to do. So I have to thank the film for pushing me into places in my acting and my self-healing and work in accepting my own identities, which I hadn't done before and would continue to do and want to continue to do in the next films and tell those stories, mother-daughter stories, even more truthfully. So would you say in some ways you're a, maybe not better is the wrong word, but a sort of a more, is there a, sort of a mature actor that's come out of this project than the one that went into it? Um, yes and no. I think, I think um, in, in, 
facing parts of myself I hadn't faced before. There was um, a childish reaction that would happen. And even after the film finished, there was not accepting of some realities, which uh, can be childish. But at the same time, there was a lot of growing up that had to be done to, to admit my sexuality, to admit my relationship with my mother and to admit my relationship with my homeland. Um, and the truth is a very mature thing. Yeah. Well, I think you sort of mentioned, obviously, that there are sort of quite deep moments to this, as you know, obviously the, 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 the character losing a father, for instance, but there is a vibrancy, I thought, to this tale. There's something quite vivacious and energetic and very colourful about it. Did you feel that on set or was that something that even took you by surprise when you saw the finished uh, product? Um, I mean, South Asia is so beautiful. There's so many beautiful colours. There's culture. This is going to be a little bit off topic, I guess, but sometimes I think racism is actually envy. Mm. That something is so beautiful and I, I can't admit my love for it. And James Baldwin says this, that love is so much deeper than hate and harder to do. And because I can't admit my love because I'm so much in my ego, I decide to hate it. And so I become racist. And I think that's a lot of the racism towards Indians, as with many other cultures, is that it has hundreds and thousands of centuries, really, even though that's not true, but you know what I mean, uh, of culture and in Pakistan. So you go there. Yes, I was so taken aback by the culture and I got to be in it. And I love I love the scents and colors and food of South Asia. It was absolutely stunning. But yes, Fazia did add an extra Wes Anderson yeah. twitch to it. <laughs> I, just, I just love hearing any uh, James Baldwin quotes repeated. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he phenomenal? Sometimes you can just, I'm making my chai and I listen to him talk about being an artist and he's yeah. a real one. He's a mentor. Yeah, no, he is. He's a, a sort of a, a, liver, a wordsmith as well. His use of the language is perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Love the injection of kind of classic Bollywood in this, and obviously the kind of homage as well to some of some classic sort of Bollywood films. Did you watch films from that era when you were when you were growing up? Oh my god, yes! I feel like that's such an obvious. When I, I it's terrible, but when when someone's South Asian and. I've never met a South Asian that hasn't watched a Bollywood film. I would feel if if I ever came across that, I would be like, let's go to the film movie place right now. I have to show you Kuch Kuch Hota Hai and Dev Das. <laughs> like, um, I grew up and uh, I've been asked this question a lot on Bollywood film. I came from a conservative family. I come from a conservative family and um Hollywood was considered too scandalous. And then I said, thank you, mom and dad. I'm going to be scandalous in <laughs> Hollywood films. So I, I grew up primarily on uh, Hollywood. Uh, sorry, Bollywood film. I was lucky enough. I went to the uh, International Film Festival of India last year. So I went to Goa for it. Oh, um, my God. You're so lucky. The whole time in the classic cinema section of it, I saw a great film called Kati Patang with Asha okay. Perel. I just absolutely loved and I saw and I thought this film the way it infused kind of really classic cinema and made it very modern was just so well done um but I wanted uh to also ask I've only got time for a couple more but obviously the character as well in this she left home which is never really an easy thing for anyone to do I just wondered about that idea of starting afresh somewhere new and if that's something you also could relate to be it to go to college or just to go out and live in another city for example yeah I I relate to that a lot. I'm to pursue acting. I left home when I was 25. I started at 23, but I officially fully left home at 25. And it was hard for my family, particularly my father, because I'm not married and uh, I wasn't going out to be a doctor or a lawyer in school on campus. And there's still a lot of work to do in my at that time. Uh, the fear of a woman being independent and what that means and what society is going to think and whatnot. And um, 
I had to push back against that. And I think my parents now are like, that's the best decision when I come home staying there now. They're like, why would, when are you leaving? You have a life and independence. But yeah, I had to break the Band-Aid and uh, rip the Band-Aid. And I'm happy to say that I have cousins now after me that are females and living independently. But it's still a thing. Uh, unwed woman, early 20s, leaving their home for their career is difficult. There's lots of work to do there. So all I will say is best of luck with the release of, of this movie. It was fantastic. It was lovely speaking with you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! Hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys! Hey you guys!